Moving along on episode 179 of Blue Jays Nation Radio, brought to you by Batano. Let's bring in Brett Holden to talk a little bit about what went on on the out-of-town scoreboard early on in this series. Uh, They got a lot of help. Things kind of changed, though, in the final two days of the weekend, or Saturday, Sunday, I should say, Brett. Yeah, it was a nice little start to the weekend, that's for sure. Let's start off with the Tampa Bay Rays here, who are still sitting in that top wild card spot they just played the seattle mariners now they did help the blue jays a little bit here but it wasn't without a one nothing win from the mariners in the series opener and then it was all raised from their 7-4 win for the Rays, 7-5 and then 6-3 now In that first uh, win for the Rays, the second game of the series, George Kirby was the pitcher in that game. And now there's been a lot of controversy around what has been going on with George Kirby and that pull. He ended up getting pulled after throwing uh, or giving up a home run or a couple of home runs to tie the game as well. And this is what kind of this is what has led to the controversy. This is what George Kirby said after not being pulled. After uh, he was, they were in the lead up 4 2, and then he ended up tying the game. But this is what he said He said, Obviously, I screwed up. Uh, That's not me. Skips always got to pry that ball out of my hands. Super uncharacteristic of me as a player and who I am on that mound. I love competing. Like I said, I just screwed up. But he has had to uh, apologize from there as well. Yeah, I want to talk. I want to get your take on that a little bit, Coombs. They talked about it on the Jays broadcast the next day, but I, 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 I understood a bit where Kirby was coming from with his frustration of being put back into the game. But at the same time, I mean, if, if he would have went out there and just gotten out of the inning on two deep fly balls, would he have come out after and been like, oh, I shouldn't have been out? No, he would have been like fired up that he finished off seven innings in a big game. To me, it was a little bit of like a kind of a sore loser moment, I guess, for lack of a better phrase. Yeah, we had we had just kind of talked about how important it was for the Jays that they got these big long starts from Gosman and Barrios, eight innings from Gosman, yeah. seven innings from Barrios, fifteen innings, cleared right there. So you only have to have what two or three or four potentially if you go into extras from your bullpen. And then you look at Seattle, like they traded away their closer at the trade deadline. Their bullpen's not as good now as it was before, and they're having to use like look at the Tampa game that they that the that they played in the series finale. Taylor Spacedo is pitching in a tie game in the ninth inning and <laughs> allows the the Rays to jump ahead so if you're George Kirby you got to understand why your manager wants you to throw a lot of innings because look at the bullpen behind you yeah and Andres Munoz is hurt right now I believe as well so it's like you're missing pretty much every good arm in your bullpen like George Kirby team sport not all about your numbers like you were still probably the best option compared to going with like the seventh best reliever on that roster so anyways i thought it was weird but like you said brett he did come out and apologize it did also lead to some hilarious rants from buck martinez this weekend like anti-analytic stuff and like the state of baseball it was classic buck martinez uh but anyways continue brett and of course it's around the against the tampa bay rays mm-hmm. shout out blake snell and the dodgers <laughs> Uh, but yeah, <laughs> let's let's just finish up with the Rays here. Uh, Isaac Paredes is day to day with a right hand contusion after being a hit by a pitch, and then Zach Eflin has tied Chris Bassett and Kyle Gibson for the most wins by an American League pitcher with four. And the Rays bullpen, you want to talk about the difference between the Mariners and the Rays bullpen? The Rays bullpen have only allowed a 1.10 ERA in the last 14 games. Now, the Seattle Mariners, who are the team trailing the Blue Jays right now, they have a series coming up against the Los Angeles Angels. And then right after they play the LA Dodgers. Now, I wouldn't really be too concerned about the Angels, but the Dodgers... They seem to keep getting hot, keep getting wins somehow with a depleted bullpen. I think my uncle's pitching for them this weekend. But either way, let's move on to the Texas Rangers, who it seems like Coombsy, you pointed out, just don't want to make the playoffs. They do play their final game of the series against the Oakland Athletics today. But it could end up as a split if the A's get a win. They got the win in the series opener 6-3. to And each game hasn't been too convincing for the Rangers. A 3-2 win in the second game. And if it wasn't for Marcus Samian, 
It, the third game is probably not going to be that pretty either. Marcus Semien, four for five with two homers, two RBIs. And in the month of September, he's been 14 for 38. Are we missing anybody at all? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Didn't have him. But they Come on, do- David Schneider's here. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. If it wasn't before that Boston series, maybe yeah. we were missing them a little bit. Uh, the Jays are their next opponents, as we know, for four games starting tonight. Now, in game two, it will be Max Scherzer up against Hyun Jin Ryu. And we talked about recently that Max Scherzer's arm seems to be getting a little tired. A little bit of conversation around there, something to watch for this series as well. Speaking of injuries to arms, Nathan Evaldi will also be pitching in this series against Kevin Gosman. So these are big name pitchers, but they are facing some uh, callbacks as well, or potential pullbacks as well for the new uh, New York Rangers, excuse me, the Texas Rangers, the Texas Rangers also called up their number one prospect in Evan Carter He got a hit in his first at bat with the uh, Rangers. It was a single. And then he stole a base as well. With that, he is called up kind of in the midst of Adolis Garcia's uh, right patellar tendon strain, which we spoke about last episode as well. But the team is cautiously optimistic that Garcia will return this year. Two more teams to squeeze through here. And they're actually facing each other coming up. The Boston Red Sox. And the New York Yankees. Let's start with the Red Sox, who just played the Baltimore Orioles and eh, didn't go too well. Two wins for the O's in the three-game series. 11-2 win in the first game. 13-12 in the second one. And then finally, the Red Sox got one through 7-3. Now... More injury news that we've been talking about the last couple of weeks. James Paxton will be shut down for the rest of the year with right knee inflammation. Seems like ever since that no-no against the Jays, it's just been (laughs) downhill from uh, there for Paxton. Now, I mentioned the next team that the Red Sox play, the New York Yankees. And that one's going to be fun but maybe not so much for the Yankees because they just are coming off a two game or two losses in three games against the Brewers, eight, two loss in game one, nine, two in game three or in game two, excuse me. But in game three through nine innings, the Brewers no hit the Yankees. They did end up getting the win. However, four, three and 13 innings, but they were held without a hit. Now, some unfortunate news for the Yankees. Just as it seemed like they were starting to fly a little bit, a bomb drops here. Jason Dominguez, who was who did go one for seven yeah. in the uh, Milwaukee series with a homer, he is torn his UCL, and he will be out until halfway through 2024. Just when it seemed like the Yankees got something else to cheer for. Not so much. And one last injury note for the Yankees. Luis Severino has been placed on the 15-day IL with a left oblique strain, and that as well will end his season. There you go. Thanks for the update, Brett. A big series coming up for the Jays. Thanks for tuning in to Blue Jays Nation Radio. Don't forget to like and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts from to never miss an episode.